key to steering wheel module, seat control module, driver's doors, passenger door, Alright, we're back in the Lincoln. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this parasitic draw. So the owner got a 10 amp battery charger. Fantastic. Our voltage is 12.7 volts. That's great. Battery's fully charged. And now, if we zero our amp clamp, so the car's been sitting here for five minutes, we have our 4.8 amps draw and we know it's going to the BCM. So what I want to do now is do a voltage drop on all of the fuses at the BCM and then see see where this current is going. So again let's double check that on this red and white wire. We zero our amp clamp 1.3 amps there, and then on this bundle, about 3.2. So that does add up to 4.8. So 3.2 plus 1.6. equals 4.8 amps. There are 37 fuses here, so not too bad. Let's do voltage drop on each one and see where this current is going. All right, so about half an hour into this diagnosis, we noticed that there's some sound in the HVAC system and then the cluster woke up. What the heck? This car's supposed to be asleep. However, uh, now the draw is down to two Let's see, two and a half amps. Let's just double check here that the clamp is zeroed out. That's zero. 2.1 amps. Okay. So we started at four and a half. We're down to 2.1. Right there. And the cars, they it could still be going to sleep. So, I'm just checking the fuse voltage drops here, and a few of them have gone to zero. Like 14 was at 1.5, now it's zero. 32 is 0 0.6, now it's zero. The cluster, when the cluster woke up, now we have 1.6 millivolts on fuse 13. That wasn't there before and then all the rest of them are still the same. So I'm going to go through all the fuses one more time and write down the final values then we'll chase those. So we're almost at an hour now. We're still at 2.1 amps but a few minutes ago the draw all on its own went up to four and a half amps and I saw a 10 millivolts uh, drop across fuse number 12. Haven't seen that before. I don't think Fuse 12 is the FCIM, the front control interface module, and the gear shift module. Okay. So we'll keep that in mind. It's back down to zero now. But I'm just measuring all the voltage drops again, and these are staying consistent. All right, time for the scope. Time to bring out the big guns. Four channels. We're at this gateway module because all four networks... High speed CAN 1, high speed CAN 2, high speed CAN 3, and medium speed CAN all go to this module. So let's look at that on the wiring diagram. This is our DLC connector. So if you use a breakout box, you could only talk to high speed CAN 1 and this green orange, which is high speed 2 CAN, looks like. That's on pins 3 and 11, and high speed CAN 1 is on 6 and 14. But I want to see all three networks, including high speed 3 CAN and medium speed. So these come to the gateway module, but 
they don't go to any of the pins on the DLC. So basically we're back probing here four channels. Channel one is high speed CAN one, channel two is high speed CAN two, channel three is high speed CAN three, and channel four is medium speed CAN. Okay, let's see what what we see on the scope. Make sure you have a good ground. There is a lot of activity here. So let's pause it. And zoom in on, you know, are these real signals or what the heck is going on? Something is definitely awake, something is talking, or all the modules. So I'm seeing that the blue signal is like right there. Blue signal is very similar to the green signal in this area. But then right here, it's just the blue and not the green. So exact same signals right there. Uh, different signals there. Exact same signals right here. This is going to be a module failure for sure. And what about the red? The red channel is, so the, the blue is high speed CAN 1, high speed CAN 2, high speed CAN 3, and medium speed CAN. This is really, really crazy. So, I'm going to save this. We can try to, you know, start the car up, see, see what happens, do... Because everything works in the car, but when it's asleep, this is the crap that's going on. So just for kicks, let's unplug this module, we're already here, and see what happens on the scope. Will some of the networks go to sleep? Or not? Okay, it looks like the blue went to sleep and the green went to sleep. Oh, the yellow is talking. Is that the only one that's talking now? This is very interesting. And nothing, and then yellow talks again. Uh-huh. Boop. So medium speed can looks like. Should go to sleep. What's our draw, uh, Josiah? Uh, oh, you can you can reset. So this is very repeatable. The, me the uh, medium speed can, something's talking, talking, and then dropping out, and then talking, talking, talking. Okay. All right, so we're worried about this medium speed can, and we're down to 0 0.7 amps on our battery draw. So that we're, we're going in the right direction. Zero, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, less than one amp. Very interesting. We see no activity on the high speed CAN networks, but we do see activity activity on the medium speed. So some something is trying to talk on the medium speed CAN. And I think that might be waking up the gateway module and and then everything else comes to life, you know. So let's focus on this medium speed CAN. Let's see which modules are on there. We can do the fuse uh, you know voltage drop checks at the fuse box and I don't know this this looks promising all right this is crazy so we have draws on fuse 10 12 and 13 what do those fuses feed 10 feeds the uh, rear gate tailgate module and the keypad on the driver's door that's on the medium speed network fuse 12 feeds the front control interface module that's also on the medium speed network as well as the GSM, 
the um, gear shift module, which is on the high speed 2 network. So I'm not worried about that. If you use 13 feeds, the instrument cluster, the gateway, which we unplugged, and the steering column control module. Okay, so you can see the cluster is on, it's illuminated. All this stuff is illuminated. So I think we have to focus on fuse 10 and 12 because it has modules that are on the medium speed can. So let's open up the Pico scope again. Open up our four channel. This is gateway unplugged. Okay. You just heard something happen there. So there we go. So let's pull fuse. Which one do we want to do first? 10 or 12? The rear tailgate module or the front control interface module? It's gonna, uh, hopefully, hopefully it's going to be one of these two. So let's try pulling fuse 10 with some pliers and see what happened on our scope. That just glitched. The radio? Yeah, the radio illumination just glitched and then... Front, that's, is that the front control module? I don't know. I'm just going to pull a fuse. So fuse 10 is going to be 7, 8, 9, so it's going to be 10 and 11. So let's pull this one, see what happens on the scope. <laughs> you want to get the key fob? Okay, so it, I don't think it was that one <laughs> because we still have activity and it's the same kind of pause and then brrr, you know, wake up. So let's pop this fuse back in and try the next one. So let's lock it, put the key away, wait for that to go to sleep again and pull the next fuse. So now our draw, if we re-zero our clamp, is about 0.6 amps. And the medium speed's still active, right? Yep, it's still doing the exact same thing. Just talking, 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 and pause, and then talks again. The, the pause was the glitch in the radio, sorry. Every, every time? Yeah, I just saw the glitch. Well, let's see. When you said pause, it glitched. Yep. So the, the actual screen? No, the illumination on the... The, the illumination. Yeah, so it's staying on right now, right? Yeah. And... Yeah. Boom. So right there, that's when illumination like dropped out and came back. Fuse number 12, the front con control interface module, right? Okay. So unfortunately, we're going to have to pull 12 and 13. And 13 goes to the instrument cluster. So let's pull 12 and 13. Damn. And now the uh, high speed 3 woke up, didn't it? Okay, that went to sleep. And boop, again, and again, and again, and again. So our instrument cluster is not powered up anymore. So basically fuse 12 and 13, we pulled those, and 13 was to the instrument panel cluster, and to the FCIM. So these two fuses you have to pull together. We could turn the instrument cluster back on, see what happens but our network is still active the medium speed let's see what our draw is 1.7 amps now hmm 
So I jumped fuse 13 through a test light to re-enable that. We just wanted to remove fuse 12, the FCIM. So the FCIM, it's not blinking right anymore. No, I haven't. But, but something is still talking on the medium speed can. Let's write down all the modules on the medium speed can here. I actually did that right here. So we got DLC or the gateway module unplugged, sync module, FCIM on fuse 12, RTM on fuse, fuse 32, these are not drawing anymore. RGTM, that's the rear gate module, that is on fuse, uh, what was it again? On fuse 10. <clears throat> so let's write that down. Ten. So it's number ten. Key to steering wheel module, seat control module, driver's doors, passenger door. So on this medium speed can, something is talking, right? We have 13 modules, we're going to be systematic about this. And here are the power feeds. A couple of the modules have multiple power feeds. For example, from the rear fuse box and the BCM. So this module is unplugged, that's the gateway. I removed the 32 amp fuse for the sink module. You can just pull it for a consistency. Okay. We also removed fuse number 12. That's for the front control module. However, it still has fuse 9 feeding it from the rear box. We can see that our scope is still active. Um, some of the other fuses we measured zero millivolts so they're they are not drawing so we're down to one two three four rear gate trunk module trailer tow front seat climate and front control module and these have fuses in the rear fuse box so let's go ahead and start pulling these so for example for trailer tow let's just pull you know, pull this one, pull this one, fuse 10 and 11. And then I think we're going to be down to the front control module or the rear gate trunk module. All right, so this thing is not equipped with trailer tow or front seat climate module. So fuses 10 and 11. So fuse 10 and 11 are right here. 10 and 11 are missing. 10 and 11. Now we're down to two modules here. This is kind of exciting. Make it or break it. <laughs> fuse 8 and Fuse 9. Okay, and those are going to be Fuse 8 right there and Fuse 9. So these guys, 8 and 9. So let's pull Fuse 9, which is for the front control module. Okay. I think we just went to sleep. Everything is at zero. What's our draw, Josiah? Reset it. Yeah, you reset it. Seriously? Yeah. Everything's asleep though. Our cluster's still awake. Let's uh let's leave this fuse out. That put the medium speed can to sleep. So that's gonna be rear box nine, 
for the front control module. We pulled that. Let's reconnect everything else and see what this car does. Okay, so we got the entire car to go to sleep in terms of the four networks. How? So everything's plugged in except for fuse 32 10 amp which feeds the radio transceiver module. Now, uh, interesting that uh, the customer or the owner's wife came out and she's like, sometimes the radio is kind of w weird. Sometimes it goes to AM. And on the codes, we saw that the RTM had a code store that was not initialized. Okay. And with that fuse out, the keyless entry does not work. You push the button, the door locks don't work. That's the radio transceiver module. Now, I don't know if it also does AM, FM. Uh, I could. But look. Let's, uh, and what's the draw right now? Well, it's still 2.3 amps. So we're gonna start from scratch. Let's plug, plug this fuse in. And look, it woke up the net, all four networks. And what you're gonna see is it's gonna try to go to sleep and then it can't. <laughs> it's keeping all four networks awake. So it's gonna pause right there, that one's gonna go to sleep, and then it was like, hey, I'm gonna wake up again. We kept seeing that over and over and over again all the time. And, you know, the door locks work, everything works. What's the draw with this fuse in? About five amps, that's what we started with. So I think the initial two and a half amps is normal, but we had an, another two and a half amps, which is abnormal. So, you know, everything works, the door locks work. Uh, let's lock it. So we have seven point, you know, six amps, and then should drop down to five. And I'm gonna put the key away over here. And our networks are not going to go to sleep. We already saw that. Make sure our current draw is correct. 4.8 amps, right? That's, that's what we had all along, right, Josiah? From the beginning. Yep. And then the car timed out after about half an hour, and we had like two and a half left. Right. So I think if we pull this RTM fuse, look what happens to our network. So right now it's not going to sleep, it's trying, but it's not. 10 amp fuse, or the fuse 32. So pull that. Let's see what happens to our network right now. See, that went to sleep. The medium speed actually went to sleep, then uh, high speed two went to sleep, then high speed three, boom, boom, right there. That's the money shot. This car's asleep, and the draw, I think right now, is gonna be about two and a half amps. There it is, 2.2, .2. perfect. Yep. So now we'll wait half an hour, make sure it completely goes to sleep, and we're gonna call this RTM module. What do you think, Josiah, was that worth it? It was. It's a very complicated system, so scope is needed. On this Absolutely. Part. Scope is needed. Diagrams upon diagrams. So that's it. This car's asleep, so we can back up to where it fell asleep. Right there. So that's when it was trying to go to sleep and it couldn't. Then we pulled fuse number 32. Bingo. Um, now, is the cluster going to go to sleep? I, th I think it should eventually, right? But we're going to make sure, we're going to stick around here for a little bit, do some, uh, just see what this RTM module, like where it lives and how much it costs to give the customer a guaranteed estimate on how to actually fix this thing, right? I think that, that's what we're after. So, wow. <laughs> so it's amazing. What's the time right now, Josiah? 
We're basically down to 0, 0.0 milliamps. It's 20, so 20 minutes. So it took about 20 minutes, okay. So now, let's uh, go to the BCM. So the only way to separate these two modules without ripping apart the entire interior is at the BCM, we can depin pin 22 that goes to the radio transceiver module, plug everything in, plug the fuse in, see if the thing goes to sleep, and if our problem goes away, we're calling this RTM. If the problem's still there, then it's going to be the sync module. So we need to get to this pin right here on connector uh, 2280F, or, or we can unplug the sync module at pin 9 on 2280G, Let's see here. That's the one next to it. So whichever one's easier. All right. So the last step in the diagnostic process is to determine which module is keeping all the networks awake: the radio transceiver module RTM or the sync module APIM. Both fed by the same fuse. The easiest thing to do in this case is to go to connector C2280H and D-pin pin nine to disable the sync module and then the RTM will get power when we put that fuse back in we'll see what happens on the scope we'll see what happens to our battery draw so this is connector CC2280H I got the purple and white or purple and red wire D pin now we're gonna plug everything in and see what happens alrighty here we go we're back to garbage all the networks are staying alive and it I think the signals look pretty, let's do a faster time base here. They just look noisy, don't they? If you zoom in, or let's do this. I mean, that's that's kind of noisy, isn't it? So let's keep playing. And you'll see the familiar, and then wakes back up, wakes back up, there you go. So that's it. So we'll keep that fuse out now, plug the sync wire back in, and see if this car actually goes to sleep within, whatever, half an hour. We want to see, we'll do an in-series test with an ammeter. Yep, it's doing the same exact thing. <laughs> and let's pull fuse 10. That's pretty nuts, huh? So you won't have keyless entry if he disables the key the RTM here. So I'm gonna pull that. And go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, and go to sleep. Man, that, that happens very fast. Within like 10 seconds. Yeah. Alright, so what's our draw right now? Okay, very repeatable, right? Yeah. So now we've got to wait half an hour and... Right. You, know. you want to go grab some dinner? Oh, a little bonus footage. Josiah is going for the kill. <laughs> going for the RTM. Yeah, there it man. is. A stupid module in the C pillar. It's an airbag, so... Oh, is, is that an airbag or the module? No, that... Oh, that's the airbag, the airbag there. And then yeah. the connector must be on the other side, of course. Okay. If you be, be careful and pull it out, we can, you know, put everything back in and uh, do our checks. Alrighty. It's asleep. The fuse box is reassembled. All the fuses are in. The only thing that's unplugged is this silly made in Mexico radio transceiver module it only has five wires going to it there's the power wire the violet and red um, yep there's the the can can wires there so well my question is right now the, the key won't work like I don't think you, you can even start the car without that thing right so that doesn't work You know, it, it like 
you can't open the car. Like, is, is there an actual key in here? Do you know what you're saying? <laughs> is there, there is a key. Um, yeah, I guess there is. So can you use the manual key? I don't think you'll be able to start it. No key detected, right? Because the radio transceiver module's okay. unplugged. Yeah. No cluster won't sleep, I guess. <sighs> so, that's how dependent these cars are on ridiculous, stupid modules. You can't even do anything, can't start it, can't drive it, without... A little radio transceiver module. How? I mean, that's just ridiculous. So there, there's a two amps, and it's gonna, you know, half an hour is gonna go to sleep. But the car's useless without that module plugged in. Okay. Wow. So if you remember the initial uh, trouble report, we couldn't get rid of this code. Radio transceiver module U2100 initial configuration not completed. That would have been actually a clue to maybe cut some diagnostic time but the 2100 code means the DTC sets when there's a programming error within the vehicle identification block vid data corrupted by scan tool during vid reprogramming program the VID block for section 2 um, Vehicle identification block. VAD blocks program when installing a new PCM describing the programming. VAD block for replacement PCM failure. Blah blah blah. So this is PCM stuff. So we could try in this um, RTM to go into whatever special functions and see if we can talk to it or program it or whatever. But I, I really think this module is messed up. It needs a new one. Alright, so in the RTM, we have this U2100 trouble code. I mean, it seems like everything works, right? It recognizes the key, it just doesn't go to sleep and corrupts the, you know, CAN signal. So can we reprogram this module from scratch and see if that code goes away? Special function, programmable module installation. Okay. If the original available original RTM is still installed in the vehicle, select no if the original module is unavailable. So yes, if the available original RTM is installed in the vehicle, yes, it is installed. Currently installed in the car, the old one needs to be replaced. Okay. Set the ignition switch to on. <laughs> So basically we're going to like reinstall the old module, okay, set the ignition switch to off, and I guess that's off, okay, install a new module, okay, turn the ignition switch to on, okay. Module programming process, please wait six seconds. Procedure succeeded. Okay. Turn the ignition switch off. Okay. Let's see if it still has a code. <laughs> so first, does the car start? It does. Read fault code. Yep, it's it's corrupted. It's still there. And we'll check one more time on the scope what it does. Clear fault memory. We can try to clear the code all day long. It's not gonna work.
Okay, so Josiah, you, you know the procedure now, right? Yeah, yeah. So with this one plugged in, you do the first step and then you plug in the new one right, and then yeah. hit OK and like that's pretty straightforward. Sure. So let's take a look at the scope and then unplug the module, make sure everything goes to sleep and we'll get out of here. All right, so the car is actually fully asleep now with the RTM module unplugged. So we're zeroed out. 0.1 amp, so that's too small to measure with the current clamp. So let's set up a meter in series between the positive terminal and the uh, you know the, the battery terminal and the actual clamp there, and we'll see exactly how many milliamps this thing is drawing right now. So there's the proof, 52 milliamps. Now, is one last module hanging hanging on here for you know? the last half hour I don't know that would be a little on the high side for a known good I like 20 milliamps or less but it's a huge improvement I mean now the battery can stay you know this huge battery would take about two weeks at 52 milliamps to discharge so I, once we replace that module Josiah was gonna do another one of these tests right just to verify yeah and then should be in good shape so I'll leave this here for a few more minutes, maybe go grab some dinner, come back, and we'll see what the final number is. Boom, there it is. 10 milliamps, about 9 milliamps. That's a good reading on a Ford. So it does take over half an hour to get down that low. Needs a new RTM. What is it called? The, uh, the remote transceiver module. And the, the scanner can program it, so it should be in good shape. But for now, we're going to plug that in and leave the battery disconnected. That's it. Thanks a lot for watching. That was probably the, by far the hardest parasitic draw diagnosis that I've ever done.